Hello everyone. Welcome once again to our series of online Heart Mountain programs. I'm Dakota Russell, the Executive Director of the Heart Mountain Wyoming Foundation, and today I want to take you on a behind the scenes tour of our original Heart Mountain Barrack, which we returned to the site. So come on with me. So this barrack was actually removed from Heart Mountain almost immediately after the war. Like most of the barracks, it was sold by the government, sometimes for as cheap as a dollar a piece. And it was one of two that were actually purchased by the city of Grable. Uh, they moved it all the way over to Grable, um, both of these buildings, and wound up putting them in the city park over there, where they became uh, community centers. Stayed in Grable until the 1960s, and they were actually purchased by Iowa State University. Uh, the university was setting up a geology field school over in Shell, Wyoming, at the foothills of the Bighorn Mountains. And so they moved these two barracks in to become cabins for the visiting geologists during the summer. And so for most of the rest of its life, uh, that's what this uh, building became, is, is cabins for geologists. Uh, it wasn't until the 1990s that eventually Iowa State built some new buildings out there, and these barracks kind of fell into disrepair. One of them was lost completely. Uh, this one was slated to be torn down in 2015, but was actually donated instead back to us, provided that we could get it back here. Uh, so, if you follow me, you can see, looking at the floor where this barrack has been sawed into pieces. So each barrack is 120 feet long. That means that it, it, they were usually split into pieces before they were uh, taken away from the camp. Nobody had a trailer that was going to haul anything of that size. So usually they'd either split it into two, if they had a 60-foot trailer that could carry it, or in this case, they split it into three pieces, three 40-foot sections. So when it came time to bring this back to Hard Mountain, we did exactly the same thing. We split it into three sections, once again, and carried those uh, by flatbed over 70 miles uh, of Wyoming roads back here to Hard Mountain. Uh, where we uh, placed it on uh, an original foundation, not of a residential barrack, because we don't own any of the residential camp area, but we placed it where one of the military police barracks once was. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about the space for it. The room we're in right now is about 60 feet this way by 20 feet this way. Uh, originally, a barrack like this would have housed six families inside of it. And so we're looking at about half of that. So this would have been divided into three single room units that would have had three families living inside of them. Looking here on the floor, you can see these lines right here that show you this first one, which is 16 feet by 20 feet. The second, which is 24 by 20 feet, the largest size. Generally, you had to have a family of more than five people to get a room of this size. And then finally, right over here, we have a 20 by 20 foot, the medium one. Uh, so generally, families of about four people in this uh, size right here. We are choosing to leave this space open. Uh, we're going to be using it for classroom space for when we have school groups coming through. We use it as event space. Uh, we can uh, hold concerts, programs, other special events as part of the barrack. And it will also have, eventually, panels on the walls around us that explain the story of the barracks, uh, how the camp was built, um, what living conditions were like inside of the barracks, and eventually what became of all of the camp buildings after the camp closed. Now, I'm going to take you a little further behind the scenes and give you a preview of what's coming next for the barrack. So as we go into the other half, you'll see I am entering into a little vestibule area right here. Each of the three doors on the front of the barracks opens into one of these vestibules, and then each vestibule would open into two different units. So we'll go into this next space right here. For the other half of the barrack, we'll actually be creating, recreating three different units. 
uh, one of each size. So the first one, one that we're in right now is the 20 by 20 size. As you can see, not much has been done so far in here other than just to frame out the walls. Uh, we've begun the process of collecting original stoves from Heart Mountain as well. These are some of the coal burning stoves that were in each one of these units. But eventually, we'll actually fully furnish all of these units. What we are hoping to do is have former incarcerates who actually lived in the size of unit come back to us and sort of recreate their living quarters and narrate that for us so that it will be a really personal experience coming into here. Let's visit the other two. So eventually you'll see a sliding sort of wall right here to allow us to get through. And we'll enter into the largest size, uh, the 24 by 20 size. So this is where uh, your larger families will live. And then finally here on the end, past this last vestibule, This cluttered area right over here is going to become one of the 16, 16 by 20 units uh, that generally would have had about two to three people. So you're talking small families, married couples with one ch child, married couples with no children, or a lot of times uh, folks who didn't have any other family inside of the camp would get assigned two roommates and put into a room of this size. So a lot of older Issei men uh, uh, of the immigrant generation who had never married would be put into these size of rooms right here. But you can really get a sense as you come in here of how cramped this space is. You know, 16 by 20 is not a lot of room. Um, so these spaces are going to be developed in the years to come. I'm hoping by the end of 2021, we will be able to start furnishing at least some of these and be able to give visitors a real sense of what life was like inside of an actual barrack in Heart Mountain. Thanks for joining us today. Definitely remember to tune in at 1 p.m. tomorrow for Museum Manager Callie Stussy's program on notable women of Heart